uh, climbing the mountain, driving up the mountain here. <laughs> and we noticed somebody was plucking in a pretty dangerous pose, as you can see. And there's even some fruit here, actually, beside the guy who's plucking. Oh, that's the one we saw in the forest that... Uh, like those plum type of things? No, like the one that's on the ground, they're pretty slippery if you step on it, but we didn't figure out what that was. Cool, we'll ask the guy. Yeah. So this is the uh, taproot of the tree there in the center, and you can see these other side roots. This is uh, caused by erosion, obviously, and eventually this poor ancient tree will die because of it. Um, but for now, it's still thriving, but you can see how deep. Here's the regular ground level, and the taproot goes down. It's exposed for about I'm six feet, about five feet underground is exposed, and it continues straight down. That is what makes ancient tree tea so amazing, because that taproot has access to you. tons of delicious minerals and whatever the magic the tree does. So I've stopped here just a few meters down the road from the... Uh, the tree with the exposed root, so I heard a mountain stream, and if I swing around, right across from the mountain stream, which seems to mysteriously end, is another really old tree. You can see the size of that trunk. Give you a sense of how old the tree is. <laughs> And there's the fertilizing system. They're just running around the garden, foraging. We've got a bunch of chickens, some young ones down there, amongst these uh, incredibly ancient trees. So we're slowly making our way up the garden here. I saw the chicken run away from you guys. So behind me here, there's a, let me try and point to it, right there, is a, a, another tea tree, but you notice the leaf is quite yellow compared to the, the trees, the other trees around here. And, this is actually something that's sought after in Chinese tea is the teas are not the trees are not all one cultivar and this gives the tea uh, a lot of dimension and uh, gives it its great uh, tasting profile oh. So another thing that makes uh, good tea is actually nature. So what you see here is uh, actually a parasitic plant that's growing on the tea tree. And uh, they don't remove these. These things will pick out certain trees and certain spots on certain trees. And... Um, They'll cause a little bit of stress, but they won't kill the tree. They, they never overrun the whole tree. You can see some more hanging down over there. Um, and this is another thing that makes great tea, is uh, nature, just the environment. So another, uh, another example of nature at work here is we've got a beautiful giant tree right here behind me that actually uh, blossoms and has flowers. And a tea tree, uh, an ancient tea tree right here, that's literally growing, mm, like in it, almost. Um, this is actually a very old tea tree, but it's been stunted a little bit because of the proximity of this tree. But the way this flowering tree affects the uh, tea is its fragrance is very prominent. And that has an effect on both this tea tree's flavor and just over here. Right beside it, we've got another very old tree, actually about the same age as that little one. But the little one, again, was stunted because of the presence of that tree. So um, so these trees both get uh, 
amazing flavor because of that. And there's another thing on this tree that's interesting that I want to show you is it's got all kinds of buds up here. You can see them. Uh, all kinds of buds here. You'd think, oh, it's ready to roll. But again, the ancient tree, different parts, um, but at different times. So this tree is actually not ready to, to be plucked. The producer is waiting until the, the whole tree is ready. So that's another part of just sort of letting nature run its course to make sure you get the best tasting product possible. Ding! I was commenting about this tree earlier, but just now I noticed they're actually sort of attached here. Really interesting. So I just came through a little alley in the village and I got to admit I was a little nervous because there was a, quite a number of dogs and they don't always react well to a foreigner. I think just because they're like, what the hell is that? Anyway, it was all good. I just stood really close to our host because I figure he can save me if something goes wrong. Everything went a-okay. <laughs> So we've just come down off the mountain after looking at the tea garden and checking out some of the tea that we saw drying before we left here behind me. Of course you can see the beautiful sunset also behind me. But yeah, they've got a bunch of uh, purple stem uh, ancient tree that's it at different stages. The stuff that's right behind me here, let me point to it, was uh, wet when we got here, very wet but it's almost uh, dry now. How dry is it compared to how we felt? Yeah, I'm pretty dry. I still need uh, some more time. And this stuff here was already pretty dry. Right there. And here. It's really hard to point with the, uh, like this. That was pretty dry when we left, so it's probably getting close to finish, but I don't know. Let's go check. Is that one almost done? Almost done? Uh, still not pretty dry, but... Uh if it's close enough, it's okay. Right. There you have it. And there's uh, also some more fresh stuff over here. Looks pretty fresh. So I'm just down by one of the teas that are drying. This one's pretty fresh, pretty wet. But I wanted to let you know that this one smells like cotton candy. Which uh, Jen describes more as a starchy sweet. But uh, it's just really sweet and delicious. I would love to try that one when it's done. What an amazing day. So I'm just trying some of the tea from right behind me. The producer just grabbed some and uh, wow, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. This is like a minutes old Shen Puar and it is uh, powerful, but it's not... Uh, I always had a, a notion that uh, fresh Shen Puar was really astringent and, and barnyard and all of those things. This is powerful but it's got a really profound sweetness right on the sides of the tongue. And it's, it's bloody delicious. Can't wait for you guys to try it. Mm. 
Oh, right. So banana trees there. And we're just walking down to the grandmother's house, was it? Yeah, see the grandma. Mm. So they used to have cows and uh, pigs. pigs and all kinds of uh, livestock here. Hey, but now it's just uh, <laughs> motorbike parking. <laughs> Let's go in the Oh, look at that. Oh, it's The cat is cold too, trying to warm up. Right? He doesn't care how close you get. So we're just taking a minute to warm up uh, and Li Gang is showing us around his house and I can't, it's just amazing like the uh, difference in culture. So we've got a open fire with the traditional kettle on it, two burner stove, because there's another one over here. The tradition is, is that that other fire pit is for the ladies. But if you see in the back, there's also a, I don't know, I'm say like a 48 inch TV. So it's really a, it's really a, like a cultural choice here, uh, how they live and how they work and just there's food everywhere. Uh, what, I, what I mean is they plant their own food and everything's so fresh. There's chickens everywhere, pigs, uh, like they, they told us when we got here, if you want to have chicken, you've got to hold on to chicken. you got to kill that in the morning. Once the day starts, the chickens all run around. You can't just go and find them because they literally run around and feed all day. So the lifestyle for me to witness this has been amazing. And it's not like they're poor at all. It's just different and quite uh, just really eye-opening. And it's fun to not just be here and look at tea, but also learn about their culture, their customs, their way. Anyway. <laughs> So this is the uh, typical end of day activity. It's almost nine o'clock, so it's a long day for these folks. Pretty much up at dawn. Now they're gonna pan the tea they brought in, and uh, after that, hopefully they'll get a little supper. No, they'll definitely get some supper, but it's a long, long day. He had to jump in for her. I think she went to do the fire. She had to go change the wood or whatever. As they progress, they pull logs out, typically. So she probably ran to pull a log out. As she gets closer to done, you can see her batch is more is more completely finished than his batch, which must have gone in a little later. Oops. So I'm just near where they pan. Uh, there's another a little drying room here. And you can see all that fresh leaf behind me on this side and on this side. So I hope they don't have to pan all of this tonight, but I think they might. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven batches, two panners, 15 minutes a batch. What is that? Eight, four. Yeah, they got a good, uh, good couple hours of panning to do here tonight. It's going to be a long night for them. It's hard work uh, making tea. So my fever came back. I'm still up in the mountain in Pasha. And I really like their culture because I get fudge <laughs> when I'm sick. 
with black tea. So I mean, what, what could really be better than that? And I think I might have seen some honey over there. I'm not sure. Oh, you want the honey now? I don't know, whatever she said. <laughs> but I'm going to have the fudge first. It's not really fudge. It's a really dark sugar. Yeah. Raw sugar. Kind of we could have put that in hot water just to make that into a, a brown sugar water. Brown sugar is considered in warming I'm and for stomach. I'm quite enjoying this. And that's why you're having that straight up. I'm almost done. Bye bye. Anyway, you go and pan some tea. Okay. So we were just chatting on the way up about how this process is 800 years old and it's a handmade process. That, you know, as an engineer, I can see a way you could probably automate this and go from bark to paper in about 30 minutes. But what's the point? At a certain point, the best things are handmade. These people have been doing this. The village has been here for, I think, 1,300 years. They've been making this paper for 800 years. They used to bang it out with hammers. Now they use this water method. I guess that batch didn't work. Okay, so our fearless Ms. Wu is going to give this a try. With the coaching from, uh, coaching from the master who was doing it earlier. So draw it to the surface. And gently raise it. Oh, good job, good job. Great work, you're hired. She's hired, right? Hanhao, Hanhao. Oh, she's going to roll solo now. She's ready to go. Let's see. Here's the real test. Get that wet. <clears throat> oh, look, she's got that turbulence going. Scoop it. Let it settle. How is it? Is it a good one? Let's see. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Oh, it's pretty fine actually. It's a pretty fine paper.